What's going on YouTube? Alt Matrix here and today we are taking a look at Transformers Robots in Disguise Deluxe Class Starscream. I picked this up in Canada. Specifically my good friend from the TF Wire days at Nightbeat, otherwise known as Ryan, picked this up for me and sent it down my way here into the States. Ryan, if you're watching, thank you so much. Now this figure is really, really cool, but has so many issues. I would like to start off the review by talking about the figure's design, which I love. I absolutely adore this look, and the overall aesthetic of the figure is fantastic, and a great upgrade from his less than iconic look from Transformers Prime. Head sculpt is definitely different, much more thin than it used to be, but you see the nice air funnels or air scoops here on the back of his shoulders. Now, a lot of folks don't care for this look. They think it looks dumb. Well, they're missing one key point. Look at this figure very carefully, and if you've seen the original Generation 1 movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is a very regal look. His shoulders are styled exactly like the shoulder pads he was wearing when he was crowned in the original movie. And the wings? The wings form kind of a half cape, something that somebody in royalty might wear. So effectively what Hasbro has designed here is a royalty-esque Starscream. If I have one complaint of the robot mode is I don't particularly care for the guns that can attach to either of the forearms. I think they're just a little bit too small, but eh, oh well. They are easily hand-carried as well. Starscream would be highly posable if his legs weren't complete and total garbage. I don't know what it is lately with figures, but their ball joints and their hips are atrocious. I'm going to have to get some pledge for this guy because this is pretty bad. They can hold their own weight all right, but they can't hold the figure up all that well. Also, the knees, specifically the pins here in the knees, are also pretty bad. I'm not sure how to fix that, but I could definitely fix the ball joints and the hips. Head is on a swivel. Shoulders are swiveled with a hinge or another swivel here underneath. And then ball joint in the elbows and a hinge in the hands. The only other articulation besides the hip, the swivel in the thigh, and the knee, is some articulation in the foot for the transformation. So you could get some decent poses out of this guy if you could get him to hold still. Size-wise, he's in scale with the rest of the Decepticons in the line, save for Quillfire, who is shorter. Starscream's transformation is rather complex, but not hard. To start off with, we are going to come to the hands and fold the hands up into the backs of the forearms and then turn the arms such that the ball joint is pointing towards the outside of the figure, like that. Then come around to the back where the wing and wings, the backpack and the nose cone are stored, fold out the wings a little bit and grab them and pull them down over the front of the nose cone to the back of the knees. Then take the nose cone, flip it up, and cover the robot head. I like to just take the arms and point them out to the sides now. Take the legs and collapse the knees into the shins under or just below the foot. Or I should say behind the foot, like that. And then combine the legs and they do snap together and then fold the feet or heels down as far as they will go. Then take the wing section and fold that up and make sure that the wings are pointing towards the back of the vehicle mode. And then the whole wing section will peg up to the very back of the vehicle mode. That will allow you to swing the wings forward and then peg them into place in this little cutout right here by my tip of my finger. So we'll just peg those in like that and then come to the chest and unpeg the chest sections, the red chest sections that is, and they peg in pretty tight but they also have the tendency to pop out at the same time if they're not pegged in all the way. Fold them down, and the red sections will peg into the rest of the hole just above where the wing is. You can do this without disturbing the wing, but it's easier to just push the wings out of the way. And then replace the wings back, and then the arms will fold back, and these openings in the bottom of the forearms will peg into these two sections at the back of the plane mode, like so. 
Starscream's plane mode here is much more akin to his Transformers animated version than his Transformers Prime version, and I like this quite a bit, actually. The funny thing about this mode is I get the distinct impression that this figure is what's called a pre-tool of the upcoming Deluxe Class Windblade figure. I just have the sneaky suspicion that this is going to be the exact same transformation for that figure. And it's a fine transformation. I do think it's a good transformation. And I like the alt mode, though it's not as cohesive as his original Transformers Prime Deluxe Class version was. There's a lot of robot kibble hanging off the bottom here, but I think this works. Overall, I like Transformers R.I.D. Starscream quite a bit. I think it's actually a pretty good figure with some serious flaws. But then again, most of the R.I.D. line has serious flaws, so I'm able to look past them in this case. Guys, if you can get this figure, I would definitely pick it up. It is coming stateside later this year. Once again, thank you Nightbeat over at Twitter, aka Ryan, my old co-host from the TF Wire days, for picking this figure up for me. And as always, I am Bolt Matrix. I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.